Peace be upon you, my dear students. Welcome to be with you. It's Amal Maruf to explain lesson two in unit one for third preparatory, second term. Let's start. In this lesson, which has title Speed of the Chemical Reactions, we will talk about some objectives. Number one, classify the types of chemical reaction according to their speeds. Identify the concept of the speed of the chemical reaction and determine the speed of the chemical reaction practically. Number four, determine the factors which affect the speed of the chemical reaction. We will talk about two points in this session. Types of chemical reaction factors affecting on the speed of the chemical reactions. We know that any chemical reaction consists of reactant substances, product substances. What is the meaning of this? Any chemical reaction has reactant substances as the chemical reaction between magnesium and oxygen. Magnesium and oxygen are called reactant substances to produce magnesium oxide, which is called product. This chemical reaction can be classified according to their speed into number one, very fast reaction. They are it is the very it is the first type of chemical reaction, very fast reactions. As you see in the slide, the firework is firework is, is an example of very fast chemical reaction. So from this, we can conclude that types of chemical reaction according to their speed. Number one, very fast reaction as firework is. Second type, relatively slow reaction as action of oil with sodium hydroxide to form soup. In front of you, sodium hydroxide, oil to form soup. It is a relatively slow reaction. Third type, very slow reaction. Very slow reaction as rusting of iron. In front of you, there is iron oxide, which is formed as a reaction between iron and water to form iron oxide. Two slow reaction. Two slow reaction as formation of oil or petroleum oil formation. It is a type of the two slow chemical reaction as it takes millions of years to form oil. From this, we can conclude that types of chemical reactions according to their speed, number one, very fast reaction, which takes very short period of time as fireworks. It takes second. Second type relatively slow reaction, which takes a period of time, maybe minutes or hours, as reaction between oil and sodium hydroxide to form soup. The type very slow reaction, which it takes months or days as iron rusting. The fourth type two slow reactions, which it takes millions of years as formation of oil. Now, we'll talk about what is the meaning of the speed of the chemical reaction. To study the speed of the chemical reaction, Look to the picture in front of you. There is a reactant. There is a reactant that after a period of time, they will form products. What happens during this chemical reaction? First, 
in the chemical reaction, there is only reactant. And we don't have any product in this chemical reaction. So the concentration of reactant at the beginning of the chemical reaction equal 100%. The concentration of reactants at the beginning of the chemical reaction 100%. And there is no product at the beginning of the chemical reaction. What happens after a period of time? As you see in the picture, what happens? The ratio or the concentration of reactant decreases and product concentration increases at the end of the chemical reaction all components are product but there is no reactant at the end of the chemical reaction for example in front of you you have two different molecules in color blue and red blue represents the reactant Red represents product. What happens after a period of time? The concentration of reactant, which has blue color, decreases, and the concentration of product, which have red color, increases. At the end of the chemical reaction, there is no blue color. This means that there is no reactant, but there is a product only. But at the beginning of the chemical reaction, the reactant concentration 100%, while product concentration zero. After a period of time, reactant concentration decreases, reactant uh, product concentration increases. Reactant can be represented by blue color as you see in the graph what happens after a period of time the concentration of reactant decreases until it ends in zero why because at the end of the chemical reaction there is no reactant but there is a product only concentration of product at the beginning of the chemical reaction zero which can be represented by red color start from zero after a period of time it increases until it has maximum value or 100 percent as time passes yes so the speed of the chemical reaction can be defined as the change in the concentration of the reactants and products at the time unit, the change in the concentration of reactant and the product at unit time. What will happen to the concentration of reactant? Decreases, yes. And what happens to product concentration? Yes, increases. So we can define the speed of the chemical reaction as the change in the concentration of reactant and the product as unit time as you see in the graph. For example, speed of the decomposition of nitrogen pentoxide. Nitrogen pentoxide 2 N2O5. N2O5 is called nitrogen pentoxide. It decomposes into nitrogen dioxide and the oxygen gas evolves. This action in which nitrogen pentoxide decomposed into nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. The reactant in front of you, nitrogen pentoxide. The product, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. What happens in this chemical reaction? In this chemical reaction, we can draw the graphical representation of the chemical reaction by this way. We have two axes, time axis and concentration. Concentration starts from zero point 
0.32. The time started from 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. What happens? As time passes, the concentration it changes. So time can be represented on x-axis as it in dependent factor, while concentration can be represented on y-axis as dependent factor. Which of them depend on the other concentration depends on time. In front of you, the concentration of nitrogen pentoxide as time passes. At the beginning of the chemical reaction, the concentration of nitrogen pentoxide 0.16. After a period of time, the time increases. It becomes two seconds, for example, or two minutes. What happens after this period of time? The concentration decreases. After another period of time, the concentration decreases. At eight minutes, what will happen to the concentration of reactant? It becomes zero. So this value can be represented on the graph by this way. The first point, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, at zero can be represented by this point. Second point, how is the concentration? 0 0.08, the time two, time two at 0 0.08. Four time can be represented by 0 0.04. Yes. We have three points, and also we can draw the fourth point. Zero concentration at eight minutes can be represented in this point. Yes. Match all points in front of you. Yes, this curved line represents the concentration of reactant as time passes. Now we can represent the concentration of product. We have two products, NO2, nitrogen dioxide, and oxygen gas. Each one of them can be represented by curved line. This table represents the concentration of nitrogen dioxide. At the beginning of the chemical reaction, the concentration of nitrogen dioxide equals zero and the time zero. After a period of time, what will happen to the concentration of nitrogen dioxide increases. It becomes 0 0.16 when time two. And also increases to 0 0.24 at time four minutes. After eight minutes, the concentration of nitrogen dioxide becomes 0 0.32. After another period of time, the concentration be stable at 0 0.32. First point zero, concentration zero time, can be represented by red point, as you see in the graph. Second point, 0 0.16 to 0 0.16 Third point, 0 0.24, 4, 0 0.32, 8, 0 0.32, 10, can be matched by a curved line as you see in the graph. The concentration of the last product, oxygen. Concentration of oxygen can be represented by a table as you see in the slide. At the beginning of the chemical reaction, there is no oxygen, so the concentration of oxygen equals zero. After a period of time, the concentration of oxygen increases. The first point can be represented by zero, zero, and it can be represented by green point. Second point, zero point four and two. 
Not another point, 0 0.064, 0 0.088, 0 0.0810, and it can be represented by straight line as you see in the graph. What does this mean? The blue curved line represents the reactant as it starts with 100% at the beginning of the chemical reaction and after a period of time, the concentration decreases. Concentration of product as nitrogen dioxide and the oxygen can be represented by two curved lines. One of them is black and the other is green. Which of them is higher than the other? Nitrogen dioxide. Why? Because it has four molecules, while oxygen, one molecule only. So the concentration of nitrogen dioxide in this chemical reaction is greater than the concentration of oxygen in the same chemical reaction. When one molecule of oxygen is formed, there are four molecules of nitrogen dioxide are formed. So the curved line can be represented by black color represent nitrogen dioxide is higher than the red curved line which is represented oxygen concentration. So graphic representation of the speed of the chemical reaction can be represented as you see in the picture. The concentration of nitrogen pentoxide can be represented by blue color start from maximum concentration, then the concentration decreases to reach it to zero. And the reactant can be started from zero because at the beginning of the chemical reaction, the concentration of product equals zero. After a period of time, the concentration increases. Which of them has a curved line greater than the other according to the number of molecules which are formed during the chemical reaction? Nitrogen dioxide has four molecules, so its curved line is higher than the curve of, a, of oxygen. Now, we will talk about another point, measuring the speed of the chemical reaction. How can we measure the speed of the chemical reaction? The speed of the chemical reaction can be represented by as you see in the slide, there is a chemical reaction between <coughs> as you see in the slide, there is a chemical reaction between copper sulfate, which is decomposed by heat, into copper oxide and the sulfur trioxide. This chemical reaction can be measured according to what according to disappearance of reactant and appearance of product cover sulfate has blue color when it's a color it changes from blue to black this means that the reactant disappears and the product appears so we can measure the speed of the chemical reaction by the rate of disappearance of reactant and appearance of product. As you see in the uh, slide, the reactant can be represented by blue color. What happens after a period of time? The blue color disappears. Yes, this means that the speed of the chemical reaction can be measured by disappearance of reactant. And also, appearance of product which have red colors as you see in the slide the blue color disappears and the red color appears so the speed of the chemical reaction can be measured by the rate of disappearance of reactant and the appearance of product when the blue color disappears this means that we can measure the speed of the chemical reaction. As take, it takes a short period of time, this means that this chemical reaction is very is fast. While when the change 
of this color takes a long time, this means that the rate of change in product color is slow and the speed of the chemical reaction is slow. Another example. Sodium hydroxide reacts with copper sulfate to form sodium sulfate and copper hydroxide. What happens during this chemical reaction? In this chemical reaction, sodium hydroxide has no color. This means that it is colorless. Copper sulfate as a salt has blue color. We can form solution of copper sulfate and solution of sodium hydroxide. Add them together. What will happen? Sodium sulfate is formed, which has no color, but there is a blue color is formed as a precipitate, blue precipitate of copper hydroxide. But copper sulfate can dissolve in water. So it gives the solution its blue color. When we add sodium hydroxide to blue copper sulfate solution, the solution it changes into colorless and there is a blue precipitate is formed at the bottom of the tube. This means that the speed of the chemical reaction can be measured by disappearance of reactant. Where is the reactant? Cover sulfate, which has blue color in its solution, and also can be measured by the disappearance of reactant R and the rate of appearance of one of the product, which is blue precipitate of copper hydroxide. Now we will talk about a very important part of this lesson, which is talked about factors affecting on the speed of the chemical reaction. At the beginning of this session, we know that the chemical reaction can be classified according to the speed of their uh, reaction into number one, very fast, number two, relatively slow, number three, very slow, number four, too slow. Which makes this chemical reaction slow or fast? Many factors. What are these factors? Not all chemical reaction takes the same time. Maybe take short time or a long time. So the speed of the chemical reaction depends on many factors. What are these factors? Number one, nature of reactants. Number two, concentration of reactants. Number three, temperature of the chemical reaction. Number four, catalyst and the enzymes. We will start with the first factor, which is called nature of reactants. Nature of reactants can be classified into two points, which we will talk about them now. Nature of reactants may be are different in the type of bonds. Reactant are different in the type of bonds. And also, all reactant may be different in the surface area. So, nature of reactant affects on the speed of the chemical reaction by this way. We will start with number one, type of bonds. All chemical compounds are formed due to types of bonds, maybe ionic or covalent bond. So the chemical compound can be classified according to the type of bond, maybe ionic bond or covalent bonds. So the chemical, chemical compounds may be ionic compounds and the covalent compounds. Which of them is faster than the other during the chemical reaction, ionic or covalent? And ionic compounds are fast reactions. Why? Because ionic compounds, as you see in the picture, and we talk about this chemical reaction in lesson one, the chemical reaction between sodium chloride and silver nitrate, which form silver chloride and sodium nitrate. Silver chloride as a precipitate is formed immediately by adding the sodium chloride to 
silver nitrate. So this means that this chemical reaction is very fast. Why? Because it takes a very short time to form the product. Why? Because sodium chloride is ionic compound. Silver nitrate is ionic compound. So this chemical reaction is very fast as all ions which the uh, compounds form it are, are found in a form of ions in the solution. Sodium is found in a form of positive ion. Chlorine is found in a form of negative ion. Silver, positive ion. The trade groups has negative charges. So this chemical reaction is very fast as ionic compound are found or decompose in water in a form of ions. So it takes a short period of time to make the chemical reaction. Again, in this point, we talk about the first factor that affects us on the chemical reaction, which is called natural of reactant. Natural of reactant depends on number one, Type of bonds. Type of bonds may be classified into ionic bonds and the covalent bonds. So they form ionic compound and the covalent compound. Which of them is faster than the other ionic compounds? Ionic compounds are faster than covalent compound in their chemical reaction because they could decompose in water in a form of ions. While covalent compounds are slow reaction because they are found in a form of molecules, are found in a form of molecules. Now we will talk about second point of nature of reactant, which is called surface area. In front of you, big picture of some molecules or represent some molecules. By increasing the surface area that is exposed to the reaction, the chemical reaction becomes fast. Why? Because surface area exposed to the reaction when it is small, what will happen? In front of you, two types of molecules. One of them has red color and the other has green color. The chemical reaction between them, the area exposed to the reaction is small. The red colored molecules react only with the molecule of the outer layer and don't react with the molecules in the deep of the reactant. The blue molecule react with the red, uh, the green molecules at the surface of this layer. But in front of you, what happens? The surface area increases. So the chemical reaction becomes faster. Why? Because the red molecule react with all green molecules. When the reactant breaks up, the area exposed to reaction increases. So the red colored molecule react with the most of molecules of the out layer as well as the deep ones. This means that the red molecules react with all molecules which have green colors. And the speed of the chemical reaction increases. For example, in front of you, a chemical reaction between iron and hydrogen gas. In front of you, two flasks. Each one contains hydrochloric acid and iron. But iron in the first flask in the first flask is not has the same surface area as in the second flask. Why? Because iron in the first flask, iron flanges. This means that it has very small pieces of iron. 
But in the second flask, there is a piece of iron. Has cube shape. What happens by adding hydrochloric acid? Which of them is faster than the other? In the first flask, the bubbles that are formed has a great number than the second flask. This means that the chemical reaction in the first figure is faster than the speed of the chemical reaction in the second figure. Why? Because the area that exposed to the chemical reaction or the reactant molecules increases and the speed of the chemical reaction increases. How can we know by the amount of hydrogen gas that is formed in the same time? In the first figure, the amount of hydrogen that is formed is greater than the, the amount of hydrogen in the second figure at the same time. This means that this chemical reaction is faster than the chemical reaction in the second figure due to a due to the increasing in the surface area. This chemical reaction between iron and hydrochloric acid to form ferrous chloride and hydrogen gas evolves. As iron is more active than hydrogen, so it replaces hydrogen in acids to form ferrous chloride and hydrogen gas evolves. Give reason for is an application on this factor using molecules of nickel in hydrating oil instead of a base of nickel. Because by increasing the surface area, the speed of the chemical reaction increases. In this session, we talked about some points. Number one, concept of lessons, types of chemical reaction, speed of the chemical reaction, factors affecting on the chemical reaction. We know that chemical reaction can be classified into four types. Number one, very fast. Number two, relatively slow. Number three, very slow. Number four, too slow. And also we know that the speed of the chemical reaction can be measured by disappearance of reactant and the appearance of product. And we know that there are many factors affecting on the chemical reaction as nature of reactant, temperature, concentration of reactant, and the last factor, catalyst and the enzymes. In this session, we talk about the first factor, nature of reactant, and in the second session, we will talk about all factors affecting on the chemical reaction. At the end of the session, thank you for listening. With you, Ms. Amal Marouf.